Hi there, I'm Clifford Bates, and welcome to reading John Locke's, or Locke's Second Treatise. Now, the Second Treatise of Government is, is one of the classics of, uh, in, in Western political thought. It's very important for the Amer uh, uh, It plays a very important role with uh, uh, the American Revolution, and in fact, some may even argue that it, it is from Locke, there is this justification of the right to revolution, uh, or that, that he makes an argument in, the, in, in, the, in his text for the right to revolution, and that this shapes the American mind about the restraints of government. Some even argue that the, uh, Locke's uh, 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 treatise very played a heavily influencing role on Jefferson and how he wrote, how he drafted the first draft of the Declaration of Independence, and how the founders uh, looked at this. Uh, there's arguments that, against this as well, you know, but but this is the common opinion. Um, you know, Locke's uh, a second treatise um, plays a role. Now, uh, during uh, Locke, when it was published, it was published anonymously originally. Uh, uh, it was then later, uh, only, you know, later uh, uh, put to, uh, together with the first treatise, um, uh, which was more directly t aimed at uh, 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 Richard Filmer's classic book, Petrarca, yeah, which, which was about um, defending the idea of divine right of kings or the authorities of kings and magistrates, right? Uh, uh, based on the idea of divine right, and and that, and basically, the, I'm not going to, I'm not going over the first uh, discourse, I mean, first treatise, sorry. Um, uh, uh, Locke's first treatise is basically de uh, attempt to demolish Filmer's patriarchy, um, and I think it's been it's considered very successful. The second treatise is more of the general theory of government, in that sense, an argument on government. So we're going to be looking at that in that sense. Now, um, the second treatise is you know we have to take some precautions here because. One sense, uh, uh, there is this whole controversy: to what degree that does uh, is what being argued here and by Locke really is not at odds with what would, was argued by Hobbes and his Leviathan. Was is there kind of an agreement between them or not? Uh, what what's going on here? Uh, is uh, there's is a whole dispute in the re students of political theory, political philosophy. About the connection between Hobbes and Aristotle, uh, uh, Aristotle, uh, um, sorry, Locke and Hobbes, but also there is a thing between Locke and Aristotle. There's some who argue that Locke and Aristotle are a more agreement that the difference is more of of the role of Christianity. Some students, uh, some scholars, and students of the scholars, particularly that of Harry Jaffa's students, tend to argue. That Aristotle, uh, 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 that uh, uh, if Aristotle was alive at the time of of uh, 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 that, that Locke was writing, he would have written the Second Treatise. Now, this is blatantly, I think, this is blatantly absurd and silly argument. It, it's also a very much historicist argument that because uh, um, uh, I would argue that uh, 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 very much. Christian writers knew uh, who knew Aristotle did not lead you to the arguments of uh, of Locke, but uh, you know there are, there's but 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 in Locke there is this appearance or similarity, uh, and uh, 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 two things Aristotle says, and this the similarity leads to this inter, uh, this view in a sense. Uh, we shall be today going over chapter one, uh, the beginning of uh, this. Um, and then every session will be doing a chapter in that sense. Um, now, um, chapter one is uh, uh, it's literally, you know, the essay concerning true original extent and the end of civil government. Right. That's like um, it's the summary of the first treatise. That's enough. In fact, it, uh, some editions doesn't have. It, it, it's one of those things that different editions of the text originally. And there were many editions of this text, uh, many editions of Locke. It was like dozens of different varieties of Locke. Locke originally wrote this as kind of a, a quiet, just before the 
uh, uh, the, the English, uh, the, the, the Glorious Revolution of 1688, when uh, the, uh, the basically the Lords and uh, uh, the Whig faction um, invites, uh, you know, invites uh, William, William and Mary. William is the Prince of Orange and his Dutch army to invade England to remove James because James has just had a son. And, and, and now is going to be uh, who is going to be the child who will become Catholic and will become king. Because right now the successor would have been his daughter Mary, a Protestant, who's married to the uh, uh, Prince of William, uh, Prince of Orange, um, and that therefore um, this would be seen as like the betrayal of the Protestant succession that was promised, or, or by both uh, 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 um, you know the idea that we. They, that Charles uh, uh, II had no legitimate children um, and no successor to the crown, but his brother, the Catholic James, this, you know, Catholic James at first promised a, a toleration, a very liberal government, but then what happened was that he acted very conspiratorially to Catholics, with Catholics, uh, 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 henchmen and things, and ended up causing repression and, and Cause you know with the, the surprise baby that everyone didn't, a lot of people believed wasn't real, wasn't his, um, all for the Catholic cause. And the uh, um, um, Locke was basically Locke was uh, pro, pro, uh, Locke at this time for a good time was a, 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 no he was a med studied medicine and studied philosophy, a, 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 a writer of philosophy and mathematics. He principally was hired to be the two, uh, uh, the uh, uh, in pa his patron was Shaftesbury, one of the leading politician, liberal politicians, um, uh, and actually in exile. And, and Locke goes with exile with him to avoid, you know, uh, 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 James's raft after the uh, attempt by Charles's illegitimate son. Uh, to, to seize power, uh, mom, mom's, mom's, mom, 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 Momsford, uh, mom, I'm, I'm um, who, who Shaftesbury encouraged the Duke to acclaim, uh, rebel, invade, and rebel, and it failed. And the, the, the liberals were kind of hiding uh, in Europe, the continent. Locke was with them. Um, uh, Locke's patron, no, was very much a patron of this. And the, the, they were also aides of. When William and Mary do come back with a lot of ex liberal exiles with them, um, uh, what you have here is the triumph of a so-called the liberal or Whig, the Whig revolution, right? Um, wh what's so important about it is Locke's, you know, Locke's, this treatise is said to be, there's arguments, uh, uh, there, uh, was a, uh, there's a very famous book, I, I'm trying to remember the name, Ashwood, Ashwood, or something like this, um, uh, uh, about the second treatises and the revolution. Arguing this is basically a propaganda. This is propaganda for the revolution. So the, the, some historical writers and some uh, students of the Cambridge School would kind of minimize the importance of this, saying this is this is a period piece. Others argue this is a very central book uh, 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 for the philosopher. It's central for the doctrine of liberalism. Modern liberal democratic theory relies heavily on this. The natural rights teaching of liberal democracy relies heavily on a kind of Lockean or based on Lockean assumptions. Libertarianism has it. There's a very good, uh, I, I, I can't say her name, Lock in America, uh, published by University of Chicago Press recently. There's a good history of different locks in America, in the different locks of America. And I think you know, that that would be that's a, would be an interesting book. Um, um, but um, then I want to focus today on the beginning, right? The first chapter, um, uh, which we're looking at, we're using the as I said, we're, I'm using for this um, Google Books version. It's straightforward. It's it's the called, um, if I remember correctly, it the. Um, the edition that I'm using is the real books edition. So it's not really, it's, it's something available. It was just simple. This, I didn't want to get, uh, um, I didn't want to spend a lot of money for this in that sense. Uh, I have lots of editions, but I didn't want to just use the, I have scans of this in PDFs, 
I just was kind of a little leery about it because we had problems with it before. And I didn't want to try it using it and then having, you know, uh, not, not, this works so well for the, this arrangement on the screen, the thing works. I thought it worked well for the Thucydides and I thought we would try here at, at this as well. Again, this has only three sections. The uh, Arist what's so interesting about this is that this uh, um, every part is section is uh, uh, the sections got continuous. He hasn't changed every chapter. So uh, um, uh, the beginning of the book begins with section one, um, uh, and, and the last chapter of uh, uh, chapter um, uh, nineteen will end with chapter. A section 243. So it's one through 243 sections in text. Uh, through, uh, uh, divided into uh, 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 19 chapters. Okay? The first chapter does not have a proper title. This here says it has a proper title. This is really the title that's on the cover page of the edition. On the cover of this, I, I, I kind of give the, the picture of the, the um, what is often said to be the the, 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 the cover page of the two treatises. Um, but the first treatise would be uh, an essay concerning the true original extent and end of civil government. That's the title of the really of, of the second uh, treatise. Okay. And this chapter really just doesn't have a charter. It just doesn't, no title. Any edition. Um, I'm using kind of the Croft's classic, which uh, um, I'm, I'm kind of uh, fond of because uh, uh, Richard Cox, the editor, was, you know, I wasn't necessarily a student of his, but I knew him and his work. Uh, many of his students were teachers of my teachers. Um, his stuff on Locke is very good. I, let, I really much enjoy his book Locke on War, published by Oxford in, 19, in the middle of the 1950s early 60s and uh, it was a very outstanding book um, he edited this he wrote the introduction he wrote the lock chapter and strauss cropsy history political thought and he's written uh, several essays on this and he was very good on uh, 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 i think good on lock i think he's probably one of the better thing um uh today people uh, say uh, usually uh, of that uh, would have looked at someone like um michael zucker and his lock multiple series of lock has kind of like replaced Cox, but I don't really think he has in that sense. I think in many ways um, uh, he obscures what Cox says, uh, but that's another issue. So let's look at the beginning of this chapter, the beginning of the chapter. The first section, he goes, I was talking about this, he goes, um, it, uh, section one, it has been shown in the far going discourse. Now, this is the, that is the first treatise and that was all about filmer's discussion of patriarchy and that he says one what is he shown he's this is a basically he's summarizing what he did in the first book in the first section okay so one that adam had not either by natural right of fatherhood or by positive donation from god any such authority over his children or dominion over the world as it is pretended colon two that if he had his heirs at yet had no right to it, so you know. So therefore, he, one, there's no evidence that he had it. Two, even if he did have it, there's no evidence that his heirs would have had had it right to it, would have had right to it. And then three, that if his heirs had, there had been no law of nature or positive law of God that determines which is the right heir in all cases that may arise, the right of succession and consequently of bearing rule could have not been certainly determined, okay? And even for, even if that had been determined, yet the knowledge of which is the eldest line of Adam's posterity being so long utterly lost that the race of mankind and families of the world there remain not to one above, uh, above another, the least patience to the eldest house and to have the right of inheritance. So there's no, there's no other words. Who knows who Adam's line is, and you know who can be tracing the Adam's line to claim this? Even if, even if, you know, even if Adam had that power, even if 
um, uh, his children, heirs had that power. He, in other words, uh, uh, um, even if uh, uh, that, that heirs which, uh, could determine which one of the heirs had that right, and how do we even know who's really the proper heir to it, you know? And among the different heirs, which one is right? In other words, he's kind of, uh, all of these premises having, as I think, been clearly made out, it is impossible that the rulers now on earth should make any benefit or de derive any uh, the least shadow of authority from them, which is held to be the fountain of all power. Adam's private dominion and personal jurisdiction, uh, paternal jurisdiction, so that he uh, uh, that will not give just occasion to think that all government in the world is uh, the product only of force and violence. Um, uh, and that men live together by no other rules uh, th but that of the beasts, where the stronger carries it and lay its foundation for, perpet for perpetual disorder and mischief, tumult, sedition, and rebellion, things that the followers of that hypothesis so loudly called out against, must of necessary find out, uh, 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 find out another rise of government. Another original origin, another original uh, original source of political power, original political power, and another way of designing and knowing the persons uh, that have it, than what Sir Richard Filmer hath taught us. Okay, so okay, what does he mean here by this? The, the reference to force and violence—that's Machiavelli, right? That is a reference to Machiavelli that argues that uh, that the, all political reality is based on force and uh, force and fraud. Right, of force and violence, right? Coercion. In other words, he's arguing here that uh, 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 either we're stuck with, you know, the idea of the paternal rule was, um, in other words, the, the argument of this is the authority of fathers, right? This is the, that's Filmer's basic thrust of the argument. That the, 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 the orders of paternal, that, 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 the, the, that the only legitimate form of rule is that of, from God, and God gave the authority to fathers to rule over sons, and Adam to rule over uh, the, the, the earth, and Adam's children, therefore, the rule over the authority, and therefore, all power. Now, again, this comes even from Book of Romans, chapter thirteen. All authority, all authority is under uh, has been given by God, in that sense. So that, and and, and therefore, this idea of paternal rule in a particular authority, like this, now. Locke is saying, well, you can't know that stuff. You can't know who it is and like this. But even if that's the case, then, the, then we want to escape the idea that this everything is simply just force and force. In other words, he's saying that this is not, in other words, we're not the level of the war, government is not merely the uh, a structure of all, uh, again, this is kind of at one level an anti Machiavellian argument. The argument is that, that, that all government is kind of based on force and fraud to some degree. And that therefore, no, rather than because uh, that that would be the rule of animals, the the stronger, the, the, the you know that that famous line from Plato's Republic, the Simicus, the right, the, the justice is the, what the stronger say it is, right? Might makes right, okay. That Locke is denying. Locke says, and people people are denying that this is true, that it, it is not that might makes right or what the strongest can determine things. In fact, we don't want that. In fact, even Filmers doesn't want Filmers' whole argument is an attempt to escape that or to in fact he, he juxtaposes paternal rule and the God this this idea of the divine right to this brutal Machiavellian idea or Thrasymachusian conception of whoever strong and powerful do it right and. Um, um, Locke says there must be another basis for the original. In other words, is it, it, the, the awkwardness of the English, right? That, it, in other words, it needs to have another original, another original political, another, another original source, he means here, for political power. And another way of designing and knowing the persons that have it, uh, uh, other than what Filmer said. Okay. Now, <clears throat> second section. To this purpose, I think it may not amiss to set down what I take to be political power, that a power of a magistrate, now this is because you put these words, big word, magistrate, a magistrate over a subject may be distinguished that from a father over his children, 
a master over his servant, a husband over his wife, and a lord over his slave. Uh, all which distinct power happens to some another of the same man, if he considered under these different relations, may have helped to distinguish those in power uh, 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 from one uh, uh, of the uh, 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 distinguish those uh, uh, powers from the wealth, a father of a family, a captain of a galley. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk about this some more because this is very important because this this has a kind of direct echo to what what Aristotle in his beginning of his politics says, and it's very useful to compare this in many ways to this. Um, but let's then finish up the chapter because this is a very important chapter. Section three is a very short one. He goes, political power then I take to be a right of making laws and penalties of death and consequently of all less penalties, lesser penalties, for the regu regulating and pre pre preserving of property and for employing the force of the community in the ex execution of such laws in the defense of the commonwealth the, okay this is again the commonwealth of community this is the political form of this community from a foreign injury and all of this only for the public good in other words, and for the public good the common by public means the good of the whole the pub, everyone shared public good okay now this ends this, this is the definition of political power political power is, is a right now, right means here, what is a right? It means, does it mean a right means something I have a right to or a power to? Uh, does it mean a privilege in the old common law sense? A right would be some kind of privilege or entitlement? Or does he mean, but, or is he using the word here in terms in this Latin conception of like us, us, uh, us, uh, 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 which uh, uh, means like law uh, or just, uh, just, right? Us, just, right? Uh, it's a, 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 a right, a just concern with what is right, what is proper, okay? What is right, what is proper. So something tied to justice, right? Uh, of making laws with penalties of death. In other words, it, it, it has to do with the, the ability to, now it seems to me they're saying right here is his ability to deal with the penalties of death and commit, uh, and consequently all the penalties and regulating and preserving property. Now, this is the big thing for her. Lock, the, the purpose role of this is in not only protecting people's lives and liberty, but also their property. Because this seems to be, the, uh, for him, the, ma the massive manifestation of what liberty and also what's good for man tied to. Okay, This is what he seems to present here. I'm going to stop for a second, and I'm going to do something, see if I can do it. OK, here. Hi there. Um, I took a break, and I'm this. I'm, I'm this is chapter one of the politics. Okay, this is from Khan's Lord's edition. Uh, uh, that's available at Google Books also uh, uh, through the uh, thing. As uh, I, uh, it's just kind of it's not the version that I, I'd like to use. Uh, the translation is pretty good. Um, let's pay attention. I want to pay attention, and I'll compare these two again. Um, if we remember that what he said, what uh, 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 Locke says about the nature of, in this first chapter, second paragraph, where he says, you know, you know, to that purpose, you can think about power, that the power of a magistrate over a subject may be described as a magistrate, right? This idea uh, or is a, ma a rule of a magistrate over a subject. Now, those that of his, over a subject may be uh, 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 distinguished from father over his children, master over his uh, servant, and husband over his wife, and lord over his slave. So, therefore, he, you know, Locke segregates this magistrate over his different kind from these things. Now, this seems to echo what Aristotle says here in chapter two, one of book one of the politics uh, in the section paragraph here. Those who suppose that the same person being an expert in political rule 
a, a kingly rule in managing a household and being a master of slaves, do not argue beautifully or finely. Now, what is he saying is that if you believe that it's the same thing, being a, a, a rule, a, a, in other words, a, 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 an expert in political rule that's for politicals, right? Uh, um, a, 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 a man who, in other words, those who are engaging in political rule, they're a king, those who who's engaging in kingly rule, those who ex, man, ruling in a household and ruling over slaves are the same, are not arguing finely. So there's agreement at one level between Aristotle and uh, uh, Locke here. It looks like there is. But notice political, the, po the politicos is this. Okay, Locke doesn't call the political man, he calls it magistrate. Okay, and then he talks about the magistrate ruling over a subject, which is not what a politicos is in that sense. A politicos does not rule. That's a ma only a master rules over a subject. A, a politicos is someone who rules over citizens, and the citizen is the concept of someone who shares in rule, shares in the kind of sovereign or ultimate authority, whereas the a subject is merely someone who is subjected to the rule of this person. So therefore, this is like a mastery. This would be a kind of a mastery in that sense, by right? the way he block phrases it. But then let's turn back here. He goes, for they, uh, 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 for they consider that each of these different fewness and those who would but uh, feud and not in kind. For example, the ruler of a few is a master, more a household manager, how, uh, you know, economicos, uh, 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 and of uh, still more a political a politicos or kingly basile, uh, a ruler, right? The assumption being that there's no difference between a large household and a small city and that uh, for the political, uh, as for the political and kingly rulers, they consider a king ruling one who has charged himself and a political ruler, one who has on the basis of uh, 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 the precepts of some sort of science there was some kind of science rules uh, uh, that have rule and ruling turn off. He seems to argue that no, that that uh, uh, that there is a very fundamental distinction in kind. That therefore, that the king rules by something, uh, whereas there is a science of rule and ruling in turn. The politicos is a someone who believes in this new science, and that kingly rule is something different in that sense. Uh, so there is a distinction here. That in other words. Uh, Aristotle really separates the two things in a way that Locke doesn't. Magistrate is understood as king as well, um, in that sense. Uh, 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 in other words, Locke combines what Aristotle distinguishes, okay? And that's very much in, uh, a tight here, okay? Well, now I'll stop here because I, I don't want to go further here. So I'm going to go back to uh, Locke. Okay, there we're back. I'm sorry about that, but I, I just wanted to shoot between, uh, shoot, bring you to the, that little passage so you can see the fundamental difference between Locke. That, you know, some might say, oh, there's a queen in Locke. It, it, there's an apparent looking. Because notice this. He speaks of the magistrate uh, and does not really distinguish between kingly rule and political rule. So a magistrate is an authority of, of this, and he's over a subject. So while he distinguishes, he, he seeks to distinguish, Locke dis seeks to echo Aristotle and is arguing that, you know, this kind of political rule is different from household rule. And therefore that's rule of fathers over children. House, you know, household rule is the, you know, the rule of a household. That is, and that, and in fact, household rule in Aristotle is more complicated because it, in the household, this is where slaves are, exist. So therefore a household rule is kind of a situation where there's, the different, you know, par uh, husband over wife, <laughs> uh, 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 wife over uh, parent over children, uh, and master over slaves within the frame of the household, where locks divides them as different competing kinds of rule: father over children, masters over slave, husband over his wife, and lord over his slaves. Uh, all of which distinct powers sometimes happen together in the same man. If we consider it under these different relations, it may help us to distinguish those powers from wealth, from uh, uh, the powers one from wealth, 
a, a, a father of his family and a captain of a galley. So, so therefore, to distinguish these powers, one from wealth, in other words, again, that's we, that, that's what is the master of a slave, master of a servant, the yeah, master of a servant, okay, lord over a slave. So that's a, it, very interesting that this idea that master, in um, again, Aristotle would have mastery is tied to slavery because the word this master means despotes. Here, Locke treats master over his servant. This is the idea of servants of between. Uh, uh, this is kind of manner life, and then lord over his slave. Which is interesting. Wouldn't be lord. Wouldn't lord and servant be more connected, and master over slaves? Why does he switch it like this? So at one level, there's kind of a weird something odd going on with Locke. He's he's kind of mimicking the Aristotelian dichotomy, but changing it significantly enough that it alters a thing. Now again, in section three, but he defines political power as this. Political power is defined this way. We'll we'll end here. This will be the good point to end in chapter one. Um, if you like what you do like, put some comments down here below. Um, you can follow me on social media. Uh, uh, the information is below. Um, if you, uh, uh, again, um, help me doing these things, you, you can do so by Subscribestar or, uh, or uh, Patreon. Um, and again, I'm getting used to these things. I haven't really checked things. I don't know what's going on. Um, uh, so have a Okay, have a good day and thank you for joining me. Uh, bye bye.